Hello, this is Caveman PRDR. Welcome to another YouTube video. Today I wanted to talk about the Final Shape campaign. I want to talk about the uh, the actual release on uh, the day on the day itself, and then I want to talk about my uh, just a little bit of my initial reaction or initial thoughts on the campaign since it's still relatively fresh to me. So, or while the experience is still relatively fresh to me. So, uh, let's talk, let's first talk about my experience with it. So, or let's talk, we're going to jump back and forth a little bit. So, we're going to talk a little bit about my experience with it first. We'll talk about the release on the day, and then we'll go back to my experience on it. And then comparing it to previous campaigns. Because that's really all I've got to say. So, first my experience on it. My uh, my fire team, we did a three-man legend run, run through. So I did not solo it. I did not duo it. We did a three-man legend run through. So now let's talk a bit about... Uh, so when it did release, obviously uh, on the first day, first night, if you don't know, there was a lot of server instability and server issues at a certain point. It came about the late afternoon night of the release. It is what it is. Um, server issues were fairly bad to the point that a lot of the players that had that were playing the campaign and had to play the game, they had to get off the game. There it was just constant error codes. It was probably one of the worst events of error codes I've seen for the game. I've been playing fairly consistently. And I've seen a lot of times where, uh, not a lot of times, but a good sometimes where there were releases where where they released some new content into the game and it made the game unplayable. I remember Spire of the Watcher being really bad. With this, um, there weren't a whole lot of people that could play to finish out Spire of the Watcher and they literally had to disable them for like I think a week, maybe four days, something like that, four or five days. They had to disable Destiny Item Manager just so people could go in there and play Spire of the Watcher. Um, unfortunately, first night, there were a lot of error codes for a few hours. They were able to do a good bit better job of stabilizing the game later on into the night. So uh, my first session, we ran into error codes and we called it early. We probably got uh, we got a little bit into the campaign. We didn't get too terribly far into it whenever that occurred. It is what it is. We had a late start. Um, so uh, we called it and then we came back on the following session. And on the following session... We beat the campaign, um, me and my fire team, so we beat it in two sessions. We had a fairly extended session on the second session in order to finish it out. Now I want to shift back to uh, previous uh, experience. So, uh, previous, previous experiences for Legend Difficulty campaign. I've been doing duo run-throughs on, or I had previously done duo run-throughs on Witch Queen and Lightfall for the on Legend difficulty, and I don't know if necessarily this was something that it was just because it was the third person in the Legend difficulty. I know they've done some adjustments to Legend difficulty as well over time I feel like the three man legend difficulty was a little bit easier than the two man legend difficulty I don't know if it was so much that that third person really makes a, that much difference or if it's just that we've been power crept so hard over time and we've just been ready to play the campaign where legend Legend wasn't didn't feel absolutely bonkers hard. It felt easier than my previous campaign run throughs, but I'm I think I'm gonna chalk it up to one of those two, maybe a combination of both of those two explanations that I just talked about. 
despite it not feeling that difficult, I really enjoyed the campaign. I think this can I think they really really wanted to put an emphasis on putting a solid campaign out there for this being the most recent and last announced Destiny 2 DLC so far. I think they did a pretty good job of building a story and putting a story together for us. I'm not going to talk to... I do want to talk a little bit into the story, but I'm not going to do a lot of spoilers, or at least the amount of spoilers I want to talk about is nothing more than what we've already seen in the trailer. So, at this point forward, I am going to talk a little bit of spoiler stuff, but nothing more than we've already seen in trailers. If you haven't had the chance to play yet, this is the point to hop off the uh, YouTube video, so feel free to do so. And with that being said, I'm going to start talking a little bit of spoiler stuff. So I guess I'll kind of just start with uh, right now the main thing that comes to mind. I've got a couple other things I want to talk about. The main thing that comes to mind is kind of the aesthetics of the Pale Heart. The, the theme and the area and the surroundings, the environment, it kind of warms you in. You kind of get warmed in to this new area. There's a lot of bright colors, green. There's uh, the old D1 where they're comforting you back in. You meet Cade. You're kind of feeling like you're getting welcomed, warmed into the area, into the uh, into this destination. And then as you play into the campaign, you're aware of how serious the situation is. The witness is about to do the things that it needs to do to complete the final shape, which is reshaping the universe into an image of its own. So you, as the campaign goes along, the setting starts to get a little bit creepier. There's uh, the environment, and the environment really reflects and shows that, and shows a, a bit more of a chaotic look. I think, uh, I think Bungie does an excellent job with the environment on this, and it kind of shows how dire. As you progress on through the environment and where you're playing through, it kind of shows a little bit closer to how dire the situation is. So I think uh, I, I really enjoy it about that. I really enjoy that uh, environment and appreciate that kind of progression through the environment for a lack of a better way to say it, where it kind of warms you into the story and then you... As things pick up, plot picks up, things become a little bit, the colors become a little bit darker. There's kind of creepiness to the environment. And and if you, whenever you play it, you'll see it. You'll see what I'm talking about. So that was one thing I enjoyed about it. Another thing I really enjoyed about it was how you actually access Prismatic and how you progress with it how you unlock it and progress with it. I love how they do it in this game. You get, or in this uh, DLC rather, you get access to it early, fairly early. And if you have any sort of build crafting that you want to do, you can make adjustments on the fly throughout the campaign. You, you don't fully unlock it at the beginning. You unlock enough of it at the beginning and then you can earn some more individual things as you go along. And eventually you're going to beat the campaign and you're probably not going to have all of your aspects and fragments when you do, which is fine. It's still earnable. So there's kind of, uh, I think Mactic said it best, that there's kind of this scavenger hunt that you have to do to the scavenger hunt type journey where you have to do to unlock all of the, where you have to unlock the uh, remaining aspects and fragments, either through quests or through opening chests for public events or things like that. Uh, well, it's not for public events, it's for... Uh, okay, 
I'm just going to plug uh, MacTick's video. I highly recommend going and watching MacTick's video on how to unlock the fragments and stuff. I haven't finished doing it yet. That's something I still need to work on, but I've got enough of it where I'm pretty much day one rate ready. Anyway, go watch his video for that. I really like how Bungie did this compared to how they approached Strand with Lightfall. I get how they approach Strand with Lightfall because the entire progression of the story of Lightfall, it was this Lightfall was kind of this urgency. You came across Strand and it was kind of this, there was this urgency to try to stop Callus and stop the witness from getting the veil. You were kind of in a mad rush to get it, but you also had this, you also came across this Strand power. So now you're kind of in an urgency to try to rush and learn it and how to master it. But Strand, the nature of Strand itself was, was not like that. The nature of Strand was kind of just free-flowing, being kind of zen. And the entire feeling of the rush that it took to get to that end, to try to use Strand, the harder you're trying to master Strand, the more you're kind of messing up because you're not just doing that zen you're not really kind of going with the flow you're kind of just you're trying to force it and strand is not something you can force so i think that kind of made sense for the campaign theme for lightfall where you really couldn't unlock all of it until the campaign was over or you couldn't unlock a majority of it until the campaign was over I appreciate how they approached that, but I do not like the... It felt bad. It felt bad having very limited access to Strand during that campaign. Which they, don't get me wrong, they had, they gave opportunities for learning how to do it. It just didn't feel good gameplay wise. How Now, swapping over to the final shape, and how they approach it for the final shape. I like the entire experience of introducing a subclass during a campaign and how you execute it. I like it much better this go around. Okay, so how they've approached it this go around with the final shape, I have enjoyed it significantly better. The entire progression, gameplay, use of it throughout the campaign. I have enjoyed how they've used Prismatic and how they've approached it, unlocking it, using it and build crafting throughout the campaign because you get access to it pretty early. I like it. I like that aspect of it significantly better than I liked how they approached Strand and Lightfall. Now I'll talk a little bit more about the campaign. There were a couple things that happened during the campaign a couple there were a couple things I didn't particularly enjoy about the campaign but that doesn't take away the experience from me personally I think uh, I think there's a there's a character arc that goes on that I don't care too terribly much about um I think it feels a little out of place Maybe I just missed where it felt warranted. I know there were just a couple things about the campaign. Those weren't those didn't bother me enough to make me think that any think any less of the campaign. This campaign was solid. I I'm not gonna sit here and say that this was any better than the Witch Queen campaign, because I don't I don't think it is. But I will say that I enjoyed it. And I think it's I think it's on up there for me. As far as I'm concerned for the Destiny 2 campaigns, or really any of the Destiny campaigns, this is probably at least the second best for me personally. I think I think Forsaken's a little overrated. I think the Taken King was a little overrated as far as the campaign story wise. I think the Red War was a little bit better than people gave it credit for. 
Um, there was just a lot of things wrong with the game at the time. I think this was, without a doubt, one of their two best campaigns they've released for for this franchise. So I enjoyed it. And uh, if y'all liked the video or if y'all liked the, liked the campaign, let me know your thoughts about it in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and as always, have a good one.